everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll be creating my version of a sea witch. So, if you want to see how I made her from start to finish, keep on watching. I have no clue where this idea came from. It just kind of popped into my head last week and I ran with it, and I ain't mad. Also, I'm fully aware that she looks like an alien, and I'm okay with that. Let's start the video. All right, now the first step, of course, is to create the armature for the figurine. I'm using 12 gauge aluminum jewelry wire and I'm shaping out her shoulders and where her waist is going to be and then wrapping that together with some floral wire. Then I'm going to cut a piece of wire for each tentacle. I decided to make six tentacles, just like Ursula from The Little Mermaid, with her arms counting for the other two. And I make these at different lengths just because I thought it would be more interesting than having them all be exactly the same, can't really tell in the end, but I thought it was going to be cool. And it worked out, so that's good. I'm just making, making sure everything is nice and secure, adding some more floral wire, and then it's time to create the arms. And don't pay attention to the color of the wire in this, it really doesn't matter, it comes in different colors, I just happen to be using black and silver, they're exactly the same. I'm just attaching the arms with some masking tape. And the reason I didn't use masking tape to attach the tentacles is just because I was just layering them on top of each other and that would have just been a big messy ball of masking tape in the middle of her. So I decided to use the floral wire instead. And here I bulked out her torso and I am now bulking out every single tentacle one at a time and securing it with masking tape. And this is what we got five million hours later. Now I'm just gonna bulk out her hips here with some more aluminum foil and then attach that with masking tape as well. Now it's time to cover the entire thing with polymer clay. This is another very time consuming process. I show two um, tentacles being covered in clay on camera and I do the rest off camera. I kept hitting the camera and it was knocking it everywhere and it was just a big pain. So I didn't film everyone, but you get the gist of it. You see one, you've seen them all. Just like that, all the tentacles are covered. Now it's time to shape them out and put them into their final position. This was a fun part. I enjoyed it. It was satisfying and none of the clay ripped, so that was awesome. <laughs> Alright, now it's time to finish covering the rest of the piece in clay. This figurine was outside of my comfort zone. I haven't really made anything that looks like her and that actually makes it so much better for me and i'm sure you guys can relate to this too um, when you create something that you didn't think you could create that is just so much more gratifying than succeeding at a project that you knew you could do with your eyes closed you know what i mean like that just makes it so much more exciting i love challenging myself i love surprising myself and yeah while some of those surprises are negative like wow that turned out like crap and belongs in the trash the positives always outweigh them and that right there is what makes this all worth it for me so challenge yourself get out of your comfort zone make something that you didn't think you could make no matter how simple or elaborate the final result is and then of course first and foremost create things that you can be proud of All right, now that we've got everything covered in clay, I'm going to add some webbing in between each of the tentacles just to create more interest and take it to the next level. And I'm doing that by just shaping out a piece of clay in my fingers, little triangle shape, and then smoothing it into each tentacle like that.
here's where we're at. Looking good. Can't complain. Now I'm just further defining the webbed areas in between the tentacles using my large ball stylus. And as you can see, I'm rolling the ball stylus on the clay. I'm not dragging it because I don't want to drag the clay down. I just want to create a deeper impression. Now it's already time to add the suckers. So before I put these down, I just brushed the surface of the underside of each tentacle with some bacon bond just to make sure that they're really secure. And then after I add the little ball of clay, I press it down a little bit and then create another impression with my large ball stylus and then finish them off with a little hole in the middle with my tiny ball stylus. And I'm just repeating this process over and over and over again until every tentacle is complete. And there we go, all those suckers are on. <laughs> no pun. All right, now to create some more interest on the octopus half of our sea witch, I'm just adding a piece of clay above each tentacle to create the look that the flesh is stretching from the top to the bottom, like so. I'm just blending all of that together, making it look really natural and realistic. I'm just adding some clay for her chest, blending all that out, and then inserting a skewer into the top for the neck, and then adding some clay like that, and just blending everything together, making sure everything's nice and smooth and ready for detail. And now I'm just adding some more clay for her abdomen, just to bring that out a little bit so it's not so flat, and just blending all that in. And now it's time for the arms. To do these, I just roll out a piece of clay and add it to the wire. I do the upper arm as one piece, as you can see here. I'm just wrapping the clay around the wire, blending it in. Then I stop it at the elbow, and then I add the forearm as a separate piece, and then blend that in as well. And then as I'm blending, I never want to forget where the elbow is, so I always bend the arm a little bit just to indicate that. And I'm just repeating this process on the other side for the other arm. And then once those look good, I'm just going to shape out the collarbone with my medium ball stylus. Like that. Rolling it on the surface, not dragging it. And now it's time to make the head. And I'm covering a small egg-shaped piece of aluminum foil with clay. Smoothing that all out and then inserting a skewer to the bottom so that it's easier to hold while I'm sculpting the facial features. And the first step to the facial features is, for me, to create the eye sockets, like so, with my large ball stylus. And now it's time to create the eyes. To do these, I just have that nice little oval shaped piece of clay that I'm adding to the eye sockets and then rocking my skinny spatula tool, whatever you want to call it. Um, back and forth to create the shape of the eye and as you can see I'm pressing in at the ends Harder and then loosening up as I rock over the middle and I left all of this footage in here in real time So that you can see how I do it and this is a really easy process It works great for me every time and I love it and I hope you guys find it useful, too And now I'm just blending in the upper eyelid and lower eyelid with my spoon tool and then defining it a little bit with a ball stylus. Now it's time to create the bottom lip. 
I have a full tutorial on how to sculpt mouths here. I'll link it at the top if you want to check that out. But basically I create the chin and the bottom lip as one piece and then the upper lip and the area above the upper lip as a second separate piece. Here I'm creating the upper lip, shaping it out with my fingers and then adding it above the bottom lip. Like that. And it was at this moment in time where I decided I wanted to give her a very fish-like facial structure. So that's exactly what I did. And I gave her like a wider mouth and here I am flattening out the nose area and then adding a little another piece here to just kind of make that protrude a little bit more. Just blending everything out, making sure everything looks good. Adding some cheekbones like that. And then adding some extra skin in the middle of her face in front of each eye just to really enhance that fish look. I think it looks great. I'm really happy with that idea. <laughs> now I'm just creating those brow bones here, bringing her chin out a little bit, further detailing everything, adding the nostrils, some little details up here in the brow bone area, a couple wrinkles, and there she is. Now I'm going to pre-bake the head just so I don't smash it after I add it to the body and add all the hair and all the other details. But before I do that, I'm just brushing the entire surface with some clay softener to remove fingerprints. And fresh out of the oven, she's looking pretty good. Now I'm just adding her to the body by adding a little bit of bacon bond and sticking it onto the skewer. And now it's time to detail her body. I wanted her to be very natural looking, as in like, I don't want her to have any literal clothing on or anything like that. I just wanted her to look like she is just completely a product of the sea. No armor. No clothes, just this awesome sea creature. So for the first step of detailing, I'm adding all of these tiny little bumps here all over the place. And then while I'm doing that, I get sidetracked and start doing the hair just because the design for her hair was really stumping me. I had no idea what I was going to do. So I just had to see something on her head to see that this would go in a good direction. And so I'm just kind of experimenting here before I take it all off. And I just did that to make myself feel better. <laughs> It's going to look good. All right. Now I came up with the idea to give her a claw for one of her hands instead of giving her two hands. At first, I was really skeptical about this because I'm like, what if it looks stupid? Like, is this going to be too much? But in the end, I was really, really happy with it. And I would never want her to just have two hands after seeing her like this. So then to make the claw, as you saw, I roughed out the shape with aluminum foil, covered it in clay, and now I'm just adding all of the details to it like that. And then to attach the claw to her arm, I poke out a hole with my pin tool, slide it on, and then add some more clay to create that connection like that very lobster crab like and i loved it now i'm just adding some more little bumps just like she has on her body to the claw and her forearm and i'm really happy with it at this point Now it's time to create her hand, her one hand that she has. <laughs> you guys all know how much I don't like making hands, but I left all of the footage in just so you could see how I do it. Now it's time to attach it like that. Is this the best hand I've ever made? No. Does it do the job? Yes, it does. <laughs> so we're good. All right, now just adding some more bumps to the hand and forearm here. 
Now I'm going to add some spikes to her shoulders here. Like that. Making her look a little more sinister. And now using my small ball stylus, I'm adding some more details to the claw. Like that. And now I'm getting her ready for another bake by brushing her upper half with clay softener. And then to create a nice little octopus texture on the bottom half, on the tentacles, I'm going to randomly place some bacon bond and then roughly spread it around with a paintbrush like this. And this does smooth out a little bit in the oven, but the texture is there for the most part. If you want a more intense texture, then I would suggest doing this a couple times. And now she's ready for another bake. And then fresh out of the oven, she is at a point right now where I have no idea what to do with her next. I was texting people, I was like, oh my god, she's so boring, what am I supposed to do with her, no one's gonna like this, I should just start over and do something else. But after sleeping on it, I thought of the idea to kind of create this coral reef texture on her, like a bunch of different stuff has been growing on her for years and years, and you know, like I add some sea foam, some algae, some barnacles, and just all sorts of stuff. And it, it was so much fun creating this detail, and it was even more fun because I knew exactly what I was doing now. <laughs> detail for days. I'm giving her a nice little algae seafoam choker here. A couple of barnacles. Just detailing her like crazy until I get her to a point that I like. Now it's really time for the hair, but this is a, there's a little bit of trial and error here. This is my first idea that I don't like, that I take off. Not sure where I was going with that. So I take that off and I just decide to texture her crown that I've elongated here with that same texture that I have on her body. And then I decide to add two tentacles to it. And then of course some barnacles here. And I'm just making those tentacles first before I attach them. Adding some bacon bond before I stick the suckers on. Now it's time to attach them. I was going to put them hanging down, but I thought it looked way cooler having them up in the air like this and kind of twisting around each other. So I'm really happy with how her hair came out. Or her head tentacles. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Just adding some more texture to the back of her neck. Now I'm texturizing the tentacles on her head to match the tentacles on her lower half, like so. And she's ready for her last bake. And now it's time to paint. To paint her, I am using some watered down purple and I'm just layering that on, brushing on a coat, wiping it off a paper towel, and just repeating that process until I get to a point that I like. And I did see a few comments regarding whether or not it's okay to add water to acrylic paints to dilute them, and in my experience the answer is yes, it's perfectly fine, I've never had any issues. Acrylics are water-based, they're water-soluble, 
so that really only makes sense. You don't want to water down oils, enamels, latex paints, or anything like that. If you're against watering down your acrylics, you can use acrylic medium, but even on the back of the container, it says combine with water. So it's really up to you what you decide to do. I've never had any issues, no stickiness, no problems whatsoever, even on pieces that I don't glaze. All right, now I decided on an oil slick type color scheme for her, a very nice iridescent look here. And to create that, I am adding some green metallic paint that has a blue shift to it over the purple and this looks really cool and it, lo it also looks cool just straight on the beige clay here and it maintains that translucency that i absolutely love especially for aquatic pieces like our sea witch right here and at this point i'm really happy with how it's turning out this is nothing like the colors that i planned to paint her I wanted to go with a more like realistic, normal kind of coral reef color scheme, but the iridescent look was just looking so good to me that I decided to paint the whole thing like this, and I'm really happy with how she turned out. And now I'm painting her eyes completely black for a lovely sinister appearance and then just darkening some of the wrinkles in her brow bone and around her eyes. Then shading the barnacles on her head and then she, her colors were looking a little too unicorny for me so I had to darken them a little bit and I'm using some very diluted black paint to do that letting all the paint seep into all of the crevices throughout her body like that and then just kind of brushing off the surface with my fingertips like so and just nitpicking her like crazy until she looks how I want for a final touch I'm glazing her eyes and lips with some glossy varnish and she's done our sea witch is complete let me know what you think in the comments And that's a wrap everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making her just because she was so out of my comfort zone and I always love challenging myself. So that's cool and I'm really happy with her. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel and then follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.